While much of the world spent 2020 outside of movie theaters, this was not an awful year in terms of quality films. It wasn't a light year either, despite theaters shutting down in March and struggling to reopen in the second half of the year. I have seen about as many films this year as I have in any other year, and actually probably more now that I think about it. And so, after having seen over 200 new films in 2020, here are the 10 best. Number 10, The Invisible Man. Director Lei Whannell taps into the classic movie monster idea and gives it a fresh coat of societal commentary. Elizabeth Moss has become a notable name in horror and grips this picture with a fantastically paranoid and vicious performance as she tackles an abusive husband turned literal monster. It's a terrifying tale of both the unseen killer and the psychological anxiety of being gaslit. Number 9, Sound of Metal. Riz Ahmed delivers one of the strongest performances of the year as a drummer who loses his hearing and reluctantly seeks help from the deaf community. Avoiding the usual melodrama of disability pictures, Sound of Metal succeeds at being introspective with a deep questioning of what it means to live and accept your problems, for all the peace and heartbreak that comes with it. Number 8. I'm Thinking of Ending Things Director Charlie Kaufman crafts his most ambiguous picture yet, by staging a homecoming for a relationship that is doomed to fail. The story then takes a surreal and bizarre twist, never showing its hand to the audience for characters buried in introspection. Much like Synecdoche, New York, this is a film that is sure to have rewatch value in deciphering all its strangeness. Number 7. Never Rarely, Sometimes Always Few modern films ever feel as though they have so much to say with so little, and Eliza Hittman's hauntingly quiet picture about a teenager's mission to attain an abortion is so engaging for holding on her muted face and never letting go. Many of the long takes involving Sidney Flanagan are so strikingly piercing with little more than staying in the moment of her tough situation. Number 6. First Cow Director Kelly Reichardt once more delivers a deeply contemplative picture that does well to never get lost in the weeds of its period piece. Taking place during the early days of the American frontier, two unlikely friends form a bond amid stealing milk and learn firsthand the cruel nature of capitalism. It's a picture that's vicious in its messaging, yet surprisingly gentle in the motivations of its central characters. Even if the first scene spoils where this film is headed, it's still wonderfully contemplative in just how it focuses on these characters and gives us a glimpse into their mindset from such a cruel world. Number 5. The Five Bloods Spike Lee bleeds genres of war epics and treasure hunting to stage one of the strongest ensemble pictures of 2020. A team of Vietnam vets venture back to the country to both uncover a treasure they buried during the war and seek the remains of their lost soldier friend. Never settling too comfy into one tone, this is a film with a lot to say on politics new and old, as well as boasting some of the finest performances of the year, including a bittersweet performance by the late Chadwick Boseman, but especially for the furious Del Roy Lindo, who dominates this picture with great power. Number 4. Possessor Brandon Cronenberg proves he can surpass his father in crafting a surreal nightmare of a picture. A woman is tasked as a corporate assassin who possesses the minds of unassuming killers, but her latest mission finds her losing more of herself than usual as she struggles with her own identity. The retro allure of this near future proceeds with an intense psychological minefield of one woman losing touch with herself the further she probes in her mission to kill her target and herself. Easily one of the most daring films I've seen this year. Number 3. Wolfwalkers Irish animation studio Cartoon Saloon has made a lot of nifty 2D films that I've liked, but Wolfwalkers is one I adore, telling the story of a forbidden friendship between a young wolf hunter and a young feral girl who can transform into a wolf. A whimsical and exciting tale of children trying to save the day amid adults who are either absent, afraid, or dangerous. Breathtaking animation and one of the studio's strongest stories by far. Number 2. David Byrne's American Utopia. It's not often that I find myself highly engaged with concert films, but David Byrne is an overwhelming delight of great insight amid some of the most intoxicating of exhilarating music. There are some classic David Byrne songs present, but also a lot of new and experimental stuff as well. There are loads of great ideas in Byrne's' many talks between sets, and it's packed with brilliant tracks that I'm going to be listening to over and over for quite some time. I've actually watched this film four times, and the last two I tried to leave it on in the background to just listen to while I was working, and 
I couldn't do it. I, I just had to watch it all over again. And at number one, Baccarat. Rarely do I see a film that strikes me as both weird and unpredictable with wild energy running throughout. Baccarat is that type of unique thrill of a picture. It surprises at every turn, featuring a small village trying to defend itself from literally being wiped off the map. Violent, biting, joyful, twisty, and a bit messy, but also incredibly alive. So there you have it, my favorite films of 2020. And no, I will not be doing a list on the worst movies of 2020. Not because there weren't any terrible films this year, believe me, there were, but life is just too short to spend too much time looking back on the bad movies of this year in particular. I'd just rather spend my time talking about my favorites. And if you have a favorite that I didn't mention, please feel free to post it in the comments section below. 